Good morning, everyone. I'm T3 Live Editor-in-Chief John Darcy. And I'm Brittany Umar, and together we bring you Morning Call. Futures are higher this morning on hopes of more QE from the central bank this week, and looks like we're shaking off that disappointing economic data we received last week. Yeah, well, futures definitely aren't higher because of economic data, because we continue to see very poor economic data. We're showing uh, growth is slowing around the world, and it's starting to come to roost a little bit on our shores. And uh, last week, we got a really weak GDP reading. Uh, the baseline number was expected at 3.2 percent, came in at 2.5 percent, uh, very light of expectations. And you had real final sales, which is a measure of the actual demand for U.S. goods and services, came in at 1.5 percent, which was the lowest reading we've had in two years. So a really dismal data. You combine that with the most recent jobs report, uh, and, you, and there, you have no reason to really be optimistic about economic growth right now in the U.S. Uh, and like you said, central bank planning seems to be the reason why everyone's bullish right now. And after a five-day win streak, the S&P had a small loss on Friday. So what will be the key levels we should watch heading into today? Yeah, we had that, that impressive snapback off the 50-day moving average, like you said, Brittany. And uh, Thursday and Friday, we got really healthy rest, which is something that bulls like to see. We had talked a couple weeks ago about the indecisive, the violently indecisive action that we had seen in the market as a sign of a, a potential correction. When you get erratic action and high volatility, it's often a sign of some profit taking and things like that at upper levels. But if you go to the chart of the spiders, uh, you can see volatility definitely quieted down last week, volume uh, quieted down. And in the new normal market, that low volume uh, melt up is sort of what bulls like to see. I know it's not the most exciting thing in the world, but uh, it definitely it lends itself to fewer shock down moves like we saw a couple weeks ago. But you know, we're back above the 8 and 21 day moving average. So those are important short term levels to watch. And uh, futures are up a few handles this morning. So we'll watch uh, the pivot from Thursday, Thursday's high, and then obviously the pivot from uh, several weeks ago in early April. That's all-time highs in the S&P, so those are the levels that everyone's going to be watching, obviously. And interesting to note that we're seeing a turnaround in gold. So is this a buying opportunity? Yeah, I think gold, uh, the resurgence in gold is just more evidence that central bank expectations are driving this rally, is that economic data continues to be poor. There's no real, <laughs> you have the markets at all-time highs, and the economy is still in the doldrums in a big way. And, and you know, like we said, we have uh, the stock market equities at all-time highs, and the central bank expectations are driving a lot of that, and gold is, is further evidence. And gold, we saw a big two-day shock price drop in gold uh, a few weeks ago, and a lot of people were attributing that to expectations of potential deflation coming back into the equation. And so, you know, inflation expectations are one of the dual mandates of the Fed, and, and they haven't been able to achieve uh, even the, the inflation that they would like to see even though uh, by nature QE and, and all that type of stuff is inflationary. Uh, but you know, we've seen as the economy has shown that it's not growing at a very quick pace. You had that weak jobs report, you had the weak GDP report. Uh, you're seeing demand for gold again as people think perhaps that the Federal Reserve and the uh, European Central Bank could ramp up their uh, easing program. You, you go back to the chart of gold, you can see it's taken back this huge gap uh, from the second big shock down day after it broke that support level. So it'll be interesting to see whether it can reclaim this candle and even get back up to that macro support level that broke. Uh, one of the rules in technical analysis is that major support becomes resistance. So if we do get back up into that level, it'll be interesting to see whether uh, gold gets turned away and this is just the beginning of a bigger down move or whether this was an incredible buying opportunity for, for you gold bugs out there. <laughs> well, it's another big week of earnings with many casino stocks reporting. And Wynn was actually the first of the group to report last week and delivered better than expected results. So this could be a positive sign for the rest of the group and their reports this week. Yeah, I mean, uh, sector rotation, we keep beating a dead horse on that one, but it's really astonishing to see uh, the way that money is rotating through this market is that you'll see sectors weaken and you'll see leading stocks break down, but the market just doesn't seem to budge. You know, it'll break some accelerated trend lines and some upper level support levels, but you're really not seeing things fall apart. And that's because money continues to rotate through different sectors. And uh, the casinos, like you talked about, is one that money is rotating into more recently. And you, you talk about when uh, it was the first to report in the group, like you said, reported nice numbers. A nice volume breakout on Thursday and Friday while the market was quiet. So uh, you'd love to see that type of relative strength. And you see it breaking above a pivot here. You zoom out on when, and it still has another pivot from uh, about April 2012, it looks like, that it can test now. And then it has plenty of room up to all-time highs that uh, came on that snapback from uh, the economic crisis. And you zoom out even a little bit more on these and you see that crazy move they had, the casinos had off the lows of the economic crisis and 
Uh, the casinos are very sensitive. They're very cyclical as far as the economy goes. So that's one thing to keep an eye on is that if we do continue to get weak economic data, it'll be interesting to see whether the casinos hold up. But uh, right now they have nice patterns. And the other one we'll take a look at is uh, Las Vegas Sands. Is it has more of a calculated pattern now. Wind has broken out and you know, already eclipsed that um, pivot level that LVS is coming into right now. But LVS lo looks like one that's more calculated and it has earnings coming up. I believe it's later this week or it could be early next week. It's unconfirmed on a couple of sources that I looked at. Then you also have MGM also looking good coming into a pivot area. A uh, similar pattern to LVS above all of its moving averages. And you know, like we said, it's a sector that money continues to rotate into. And Caesars extended its surge for the year, as it said last week, that it may raise as much as $1.2 billion through a venture unit to finance new projects. And this stock reports on Wednesday. How does Caesars look to you? Yeah, Caesars is a newer one uh, in the group and one that we don't really look to as often, but it definitely looks like it has some room. It's been a little bit more volatile recently, as you often see with newer issues, uh, as that you saw it basically lose a third of its value over the course of uh, March to mid-April, but it's seen an impressive bounce as it held the 200-day moving average. You, know, you go back and you see when it IPO. You know, Caesar's only IPO last year, uh, so you're seeing some consolidation of that IPO. It had a really strong first day, but then you you don't like to see a stock trade well below its IPO price. You know, in the in the subsequent months, but obviously you've seen a really impressive bounce back. Really high volatility in this one. Uh, depends on what your cup of tea is when you're trading. You know, if you're a momentum chat room guy, if you like to listen to Mike Lee, Steve Levay, and you like that style of trading, short term in and out really good volatility in a low price stock uh, with Caesars. Uh, but in general, I think there's more calculated setups in the group, but it is above all of its major moving averages. And if you do get a pullback, maybe into the eight and 21 day, maybe you could test some longs there. All right, well, coming up, we're gonna go in the trenches with airline stocks. But first, quick commercial break. We'll be right back. I'm Mark Sperling, Director of Trading with T3 Trading Group and contributor to T3 Live. Do you trade on your own, but you wish you enjoyed the benefits of a large trading floor? With the T3 Live virtual trading floor, we deliver that experience to you on your computer. On the VTF, you can follow the long and short positions of experienced professional traders like myself, Scott Redler, and others, and listen to our live radio stations as we navigate the markets. In addition, you get the added value of a large community of sophisticated and like-minded traders. Your membership to the virtual trading floor also includes access to our two very popular newsletter products, Off the Charts and the Price Point Sheet at no additional cost. In my opinion, joining the room will be the best trading decision you will ever make. I would like to invite you to begin your membership with a seven day free trial. To get started, visit t3live.com and click on the virtual trading floor tab. Have a great day and I look forward to seeing you in the VTF. Well, flyers may be complaining these days about higher ticket prices, baggage fees, schedule changes, less routes, all that, but it seems to be working for the airlines. Looks like a lot of these stocks, based on their higher revenues that they reported last week, could be really ready to take off. Yeah, nice pun there, Brittany. Uh, but <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, in general, uh, you've seen last week we had a nice catalyst, uh, potentially bullish for the airlines, as Congress is finally able to work out. With the sequester, you had some uh, cuts to the FAA and you had the air traffic control issues. If you were traveling at all last week, you, you might have experienced those. Uh, some really frustrating delays just because they couldn't handle the volume of uh, traffic in, in the airports. But they got that sorted out, you know, bipartisan uh, support for that legislation, which is something that you never see. But anyways, the airlines look like a, a sector within the transports that uh, have some nice patterns and could see some upside. Well, let's take a look at Delta first, which reported first quarter adjusted earnings that beat expectations. In fact, it was Delta's highest profit in over a decade. Yeah, it looks like Delta's turned things around a little bit. One of the famous acronyms for Delta is do doesn't ever leave the airport, but it looks like based on the pattern that people, it actually is leaving the airport and lo looks ready to take off, to borrow a, a pun from Brittany. But <laughs> uh, Delta, you see, had a nice igniting bar here. It had this gap down that was sort of controlling the stock for a little while. Uh, but it was able to fill that gap with this nice igniting bar on some decent volume. And it's forming a nice upper level flag. It's similar to, what we're just glancing at it, similar to like an FSLR pattern that we saw last week, is that you see a nice igniting bar, you see the stock holding uh, the majority, you know, the upper level of that bar, uh, and then on Friday you saw a nice break sort of above that flag, and so it'll be interesting today uh, to see whether we get more upside on that to challenge this pivot from mid-March. And Southwest reported lower first quarter profit, but higher fares also helped it beat Wall Street expectations. Yeah, LUV Southwest. You know, you maybe have a little wealth effect in play here as people feel like they have a little bit more money in their portfolio with the stock market at all-time highs and people are, are more willing to spend on vacations and stuff like that than we've seen 
uh, during the majority of the economic crisis, which I guess you could say the economic crisis is over, but the economy is definitely not booming. But you see airline stocks uh, performing well, like you said, even with higher prices. And LUV Southwest is uh, one of the more discount carriers, so they still are attracting people perhaps that are a little bit sensitive to price. But a nice pattern in the stock. It's above both this 8 and 21-day moving average uh, coming into the pivot here from late March, a short-term pivot. If we zoom out, let's take a look at where these have come from. Get up to the weekly here. You know, weekly, they've had a nice run, the airlines, but you know, you like to see strength. You like to see people add to strength uh, in the market and continue to pile into sectors that have been strong. It's a healthy sign, and you see uh, Southwest coming into a pivot here from late 2010. So that'll be a level. It'll be interesting to see whether we get momentum uh, up into that level. And United Continental reporting a bigger first quarter loss than it reported for the same quarter last year, but good news is still beat expectations. Uh, the company took a big hit due to the grounding of Boeing 787 Dreamliner, but being as the FAA has now approved that battery fix, maybe we'll see it lift the stock. Yeah, uh, United Airlines, we were talking at the break about what our favorite airlines are, and Brittany mentioned United and Continental, so obviously I'm going to say those are bullish because of Brittany's opinion. I always <laughs> respect that a lot, but... Uh, you see a nice upper level flag. If we go back to the daily chart uh, in UAL, come on, my chart's not cooperating much with me here. There we go. Well, I don't know if it is cooperating. But anyways, you look at the weekly chart of UAL, and it looks like it's forming a nice upper level flag, sort of like we talked about with FSLR and a couple of those other stocks, is that when you see a nice breakout, you like to see consolidation of that breakout above the eight period moving average. And on the weekly, that's what you're getting in UAL. And generally across the board in these airlines, it looks like a sector that uh, looks like it could see some strength. You know, we talked about the transports a few weeks ago as an area that could potentially be a faulty signal or a sign of a potential correction in the market. But uh, you've seen a nice snapback in the transports, and the airlines are obviously a part of that. And just to get in one more airline, U.S. Airways, again, uh, strong first quarter earnings. The company is off to a solid start prior to its merger with AMR, which is supposed to conclude in the third quarter. So is this one maybe you would buy on a pullback? Well, also during the break, we talked about our least favorite airlines, <laughs> and U.S. Airways was, was that one. So if somebody from U.S. Airways is watching, I'm sorry. But, you know, we don't let our opinions get in the way of our trading. So we look at the chart to make our trading decisions, and we see, uh, like you said, U.S. Airways is, you know, maybe didn't have stellar results, but the airlines in general, if they make any money or just lose a little bit of money even, sometimes it's uh, bullish for them. But uh, U.S. Airways is above its 8 and 21 day moving average. It looks like it has a nice little lower level flag here, a lower level base that it could break out of and potentially challenge that pivot from mid-March. So another one we're going to take a look at is JetBlue. That's another one during the break we talked about how we liked it. And uh, has the TV screens in the back of every seat. you got to love that. You can watch your ESPN and you watch your movies during the flight. And uh, I'm actually flying JetBlue out to Las Vegas. And that's another reason I forgot to mention during the uh, casino portion is that I'm going to Vegas in a week for the SALT conference, uh, Skybridge Alternative Investment Conference. Going to see some great people out there. But I, I would be bullish on the casino stocks knowing that I'm going to Vegas because I almost always lose money. So I'll be donating to that cause if you're long the casinos. Uh, keep that in mind. But uh, JetBlue, another one that has a similar pattern to the rest of the airlines. Yeah, we like JetBlue. All right, time to do some quick hits here. Let's check in on Google, which saw a nice rally on April 19th after beating estimates. What are the key levels we should be watching in Google right now? Google had a very nice descending channel uh, to watch if you go to the chart. As we love descending channels, you don't like to jump the gun on them because you can get caught in one for, for longer than you'd like. Uh, but once a descending channel does break or a downtrend line does break, you can get you know, some nice explosive price action. That's what we got in Google. Uh, is, is Leading up to the report, you had some weakness. And then after earnings, Google was strong and reclaimed all of its moving averages. On Thursday and Friday, uh, it was a little bit weak. But you know, if you believe in Google, which I, I think generally it's uh, remains in a long-term uptrend. I think you'll see more upside in Google. I think uh, you could test some longs off the 8 and 21 day moving average, which is what Google is coming into right now. Let's also check in on Amazon, which dropped more than 7% on Friday after missing estimates on Thursday. What are the key support levels? Yeah, Amazon is always a very controversial one on earnings because the company is really not profitable. I mean, it trades at a astronomical PE uh, ratio. It's you know one of the top few PE ratios in the entire market. Uh, but the, pro the company has so much promise over the long term as it's sort of leading the revolution and obviously online retailing and things like that. And then they also have huge cloud infrastructure, one of the leading uh, cloud storage companies. But uh, like I said, very controversial. And then on, a lot of times you'll see Amazon have, you know, report a loss in a quarter and it'll explode higher. But uh, this time around you saw a somewhat weak report and it was actually sold off hard 
overnight it wasn't you know down terribly it was basically just reclaimed that one day of losses or the one day of gains from Thursday uh, but then on in Friday's session you saw a very harsh down move and the 200 day moving average will be one to watch in Amazon and it's still in this upper level channel but you see a, a big igniting bar to the downside like that it often leads to lower prices for that stock so it'll be interesting this one will definitely be one that's going to be volatile I think this week and one that guys in the momentum room and, and short-term players will be watching closely. Now, how about PharmaCyclics? Had a rally recently above what levels might we see pick up some more steam? PCYC, it's not, not one that I trade or am involved with personally, uh, but you know, it looks like it, it came up here to this $95 level and had a, a fairly steep correction, lost about 20 points, but didn't even get back down to its 200-day, and it looks like now the short-term moving averages have played catch-up, and when you see a bounce like this off of you know, around the $72, $73 level, uh, and you see a tight flag from that bounce, it gives you uh, perhaps reason to be bullish on the stock and, and a, a way to base your trade. So when you're trading out of a tight flag like this, you put your stops at the bottom end of the flag and you play a breakout at the upper end of the flag and, and you let uh, the stock work itself out and you, and you leave your uh, defined stops and targets in place. And it looks like a nice bull flag from this bounce. It could take you back up you know, to around the $90 level or you know, perhaps to retest these highs. So flags in general are just a way for us to base stop losses and to base entries, and so uh, PCYC has a nice flag. All right, and finally, VMware has been stuck in a downtrend since March 15th. It's lost the support of all key moving averages. How can we still short this name? VMware is one that it looks like it wants to break down on a macro level, but it's holding on by a thread. It's, you know, one of the leading uh, cloud companies. Uh, it's owned in a large part by EMC. Uh, you can see it right here down at this major pivot support area. You had this gap down from January that uh, held to the downside. And you had a beautiful flag in that. It's one we talked about as a short. You got a nice flush, but then it bounced back well, but still wasn't even able to reclaim half of its gap. Uh, and then it's faded from that. So it'll be very interesting to watch the $70 uh, support level to see if that holds for VMware. You know, like I said, it's a leading cloud name, and a lot of people are bullish on it in the long term, but it's come a long way. And, you zoom out even more, you see how important this current level is for VMware. It's got this long-term floor. You could even talk about a little bit of a head and shoulders type pattern where you have, you know, have a high, you made a higher high, and then you have several lower highs. It's not a very clean head and shoulders pattern, but technical analysis is not always perfect, and it looks like you could get more downside in VMware. So in summation, what do you think you'll be focusing on heading into the first trading session of the week? Yeah, I think you have to continue to lean to the long side. You know, I think a few weeks ago I was pretty bearish on here. We got a correction, not a very steep one. Uh, I was looking for something a little bit more. And I think a lot of traders were looking for more, but I think what you have to do is you have to continue to focus on uh, the sectors that you see money rotating into, is that the stock index funds and, and the broader funds or index uh, ETFs and things like that uh, are not going to outperform, I don't think, uh, very much over the rest of the year. You've already seen over a 10% move or about a 10% move in the S&P, but if things like the casinos, when you see money rotating into it, uh, you see things like the airlines. In general, I think you either have to be very short-term right now or you need to have a long-term plan uh, with your portfolio. And I don't think trading in between right now is going to be very easy unless you take a very narrow stock-specific approach. All right, and that's your morning call for this Monday. Happy trading, everybody. Have a great day.